Hello and welcome back to Gaming Like It's 1979. Today we're going to return to the world of Touring Complete for a brief Let's Play. So when we last let off or stopped, we had just created a working computer and done some of the first programming assignments. Now, this gets us to the CPU Architecture 2 section. and I'm going to have some comments about the Nanta Tetris course and how I suspect this architecture is going to fill in, is going to fit in here. So let's see, the first two tasks that we have to do are XOR on the left and Byte Constant on the right. And that goes up to Byte XOR, Equality, Sign less, wide instructions, opcodes, immediate values, and conditionals. Huh, maybe this isn't going to go where I thought it was going to go. Let's jump into XOR here. Read the input twice and XOR the two values together. Oh, okay, so we're not actually going to be building a new hardware architecture here. That's interesting. So in the NAND to Tetris course, which I have some videos going into the first part of that, you spend the, the first section of the course building a, a kind of Harvard architecture computer. The second part of the course is writing an assembler in the language of your choice. I think they recommend Python, but you can do it in whatever you want. And then the third part of the course, you create a VM translator that lives on top of the assembler. And that VM translator implements a virtual stack-based CPU. So that's kind of where I thought we were going with this, but maybe we're not. All right, so read the input twice and XOR the bits of the two inputs. I've forgotten everything about how to do this. So what's that button do? I don't actually know, link components, okay. Edit memory. This is where we we're going to put our program. We have all the opcodes that we created before. Okay, and do we have an XOR component? I didn't think we did. We must have, right? We had to have had an XOR component. It would be madness to have gone through all of this without having done that, right? Let's go back and look. Or gate, XOR gate. Okay, so there is some way to XOR things in our CPU that I've completely forgotten everything about how it works. Do we not have? Always output the number 164, byte constant. Okay, that seems weird. A bunch of, we can make things, we can make bits into bytes, and we know we have these one bit controls here, right? So let's take a byte maker. I mean, this, this seems really suspiciously easy, so I'm sure that there's something here that I'm not thinking of. So now we've got 128. Uh, what did I say? 164. So we're going to need that hooked up to there. And then we need a 4. 164. Let's zoom in so it's a little more visible to you in YouTube land. 164. Okay. Is that it? Great. What's this one? Equality. Output on when both inputs are the same. Well, that would be just an XNOR, right? I think. Let's look at the truth tables up here. Or it could be, you know, not XOR. Yeah, this is just XNOR. I feel like I'm being led down the garden path here. Like surely there's some 
some sneaky reason this is going to get super hard and the thing I'm doing is invalid. Check if the bytes are equal. Oh, equal! And bytes, not bits. Huh. Okay. Uh, well, so there's a few ways to do that. One thing we could do that would be certainly easy to implement would be to break out these bytes into their constituent bits, XNOR each bit, and then essentially and them all together. Um, is there a simpler way to do this? I mean, that seems pretty easy to me. Logic, we already have 8-bit ands. I mean, this is basically making an 8-bit XOR, XNOR rather. You get to watch me struggle with all of this. Maybe I'll speed this up so you don't have to watch me do all the drawing. I don't know, maybe you find it meditative. Probably not. Might not have left myself enough room here. Did I miss one? I totally missed one. And at some point I know I'm going to give up and just drag it, which the game does make work. I think that point is here. Right. So if I've read the definition of XNOR correctly, it'll be green when all the bits are, when the inputs are the same. And therefore, this is true. Now we might be seeing why we wanted a constant value. This is gonna be true when it's equal to 255. Okay, I think that's it. That looks, I don't know, man, that looks pretty complicated. Like surely there's a simpler way to have done this. Ideally, I would have already created an 8-bit XNOR gate that I could just use then in this. Uh, I've, if the game allows me to do that in the component factory, yeah, wasn't there a custom component? But I don't see them up here, so they may have disabled those for this level. And it does not like it. Right, it's because this is a 1-bit output and I'm doing essentially 8-bit math here. So we can actually do something a little different here. Really what we're saying, if they're the same, is that all of these are true, which is an and sort of situation, right? So we don't even need to make this into a byte again. We can just grab some of our ands here. Throw them together like so. Oh, because I didn't actually wire it up. Well, you know, it turns out you actually do need to... No, it's the wrong color. You actually do need to connect all the wires. Great, that looks much better. All right, so now we have this component. I'm deeply unhappy about how this looks. They're, like I said, I haven't had my coffee yet. There's got to be a better way. I'll think about it a little more. So now we're back here and we actually have to make this one work. All right, we're actually going to have to face the music here. So let's let's do a few things here. Let's rename some of our... Of course, if I, if I rename this, is that going to break the previous levels? You know, it might. That's fine. That will be LD6. All right, so now we have these load instructions instead of input to R1, input to R2. And those should... If I did it right, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh wait, but are these R0? Right? Yeah, I think that might be, uh, that might be wrong. Right, and so there is no LD6 in other words. Bring that. All right, so what do we want to do? Read the input twice. OK, 
Okay, so we should be able to just do that and that. And that puts those values in the values from input into registers one and two. And now we have a bit of a problem because I need to actually manipulate these to do XOR, but we don't have an XOR instruction. So what is XOR? We can compose XOR from NAND. And in fact, we already did this in circuitry way back here, right? Let's find it. Full adder, da da da. Basic logic, XNOR, XOR. All right, so we have a couple of nots, some and, some or. Let me get a piece of paper, write this down, and also see if there's a way to do this that's uh, simpler in code. I think that gets us XOR, if I read the diagram correctly. Yes, I absolutely went and looked this up. I did not work it out myself. Uh, I feel like having already written XOR in circuitry, that's legit. All right, so what do we got to do here? Well, first we need an NAND instruction, an 8-bit NAND, and that's going to be, right? I think that's the only one I will need. Although I will certainly also need some register moving stuff, because I'm going to have to move these values around to do the, to do the calculation more than once. So our first thing, we've loaded these things into registers one and two. So we can just do that. And that puts the result in register zero. No, I'm wrong. Also, it's register three. <laughs> Oops, and I don't have a uh, thing for that. Can I put a comma in these? Let's try it. No, no commas. I can have underscores. Cannot have dashes. Looks like I can't have any special character except an underscore. So let's do that. Okay, so now I'm going to be NANDing register one and the result of that. Okay, and at this point, I've already made a mistake because I have lost, I need this value again, and I've lost it, haven't I? Yes, I lost it right here. So I need to save these values. So, I don't need to save register one because we're never overwriting that. I don't think. So let's just copy register two to register four, right? So before I do that, we're going to copy two to four, then three to two, NAND them together, the result is in three. We don't care about one, so three gets copied to one. Now I have, now I want to do that, which means I need four back to two. So that's going to look like that. At that point, I have everything in place. Now I have the result. The result is in register three, which I think I already have. And I will just leave. No, I don't have that. Register three to out, good. And just continue to use that. 
I'm not positive this works, but it looks plausible at least. Let's see if I did it. Not even close. There's two possibilities here. Either I did not implement the algorithm correctly, or I implemented the algorithm perfectly and the algorithm is garbage. All right, so D was, that's totally wrong. Ugh, I hate when I confuse myself. All right, the result of this, all right, we're gonna start over. All right, we've got R1 and R2 and they're in the right place. In the end, we're going to need the outputs of B and C. Okay. The result of NANDing R1 and R2 is now in R3. We're going to preserve that. So now we have R1 in one, R2 is garbage, and temp1 is an R4. So we're going to grab 4 and put it in 2. Then we're going to NAND them together. Now we have a result in R3, which is our temp2. We no longer need, we do need temp1 still. Well, if we're not doing conditionals, we do have R0 that we could use. Right? We could preserve at this point R2. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to copy R2 to R0. it back. Right. And we need temp1 back here. Temp1 is in 4. So that's going to go to... Let's put it back in 1. It doesn't matter where we put it at this point because everything else is saved. I think I'm going to end up with a full mesh of four and one, a full mesh of transfer operations before all is said and done. So at this point, that's the last time we're going to need temp one. So we're done with it at that point. So R4 is therefore free. Okay, so now we want temp2, which is an R5. Right? And we want the result of the previous operation, which is in register 3. Just need this one. Oh, confidence that I got all this right? Pretty low. There's a lot of uh, shuffling things around here. Give it a go. Oh my god. Oh my. Oh my lord, so that was much more difficult than it should have been. Um, ideally, the CPU would have just had an XOR component uh, or XOR operation, but I guess we've made it now. Create a circuit that XORs two bytes bitwise. Okay, I'm, I'm not sure where this is going. I mean, this is literally almost the thing we just did on the other level with XNOR here, right? So can I 
Oh good, look at that. Right? Uh, I don't know if it's going to let me actually sub in an XOR here, but let's give it a go. Oh, well, maybe it will. Right, and then as bitwise, that is a byte output, so we just want a byte maker or an unsplitter. I just think of it as a splitter. I'm not going to be neat here because I'm frustrated that they made me do this in code before doing it in a circuit. Okay. That was a lot easier. And now we have the component. <laughs> I don't know, man. That, that wasn't great. It wasn't a great uh, exercise. In fact, I'm so frustrated by how much work I had to do there to do this in code uh, that I might call it a day here and pick this up next time. Well, I'm, yeah, I gotta tell you, I am not sure where we're going with this CPU architecture. It's feeling very gamey, whereas the earlier parts of Turing Complete felt very didactic to me in the sense of you can kind of see what they were building up to. At this point, this is feeling a lot more gamey. Um, I'm, I'm not sure what they're trying to teach with those levels, if they're trying to teach anything. I mean, let's keep the truth in mind. This is a game, not a teaching tool, right? So it doesn't have to teach. But I like it when things do teach, and so that's why I'm a little frustrated with this today and might call it, and I'm going to call it a day. Well, this has been Gaming Like It's 1979. Thanks for watching.